quiet. Let's do now the Yom Yom for today. These are sayings of the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, Rebbe Yosef Yitzchak, gathered by his son-in-law and his successor, the, our Lubavitch Rebbe. And we're going to read two because some years there's two others. So we have two <clears throat> Yom Yoms. This year there's only one other, but we still will read both of them. Here we go. Number one, and this is the free, previous Lubavitcher Rebbe speaking, from my father's speeches. The, his father was the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, who was the Rebbe Sholem Dober. It is an amazing gift of God if a person, if a Jew, has an innate sense, a feeling, a knack, say, for doing kindness to other people. Some people get a tremendous pleasure from helping others. So this is an amazing gift if you have this feeling. <clears throat> some people appreciate music. Some people appreciate good food. Right? Some people <clears throat> appreciate nice clothes. Those are nice things. Right? Some people appreciate learning Torah. But appreciating helping another person, this is an amazing gift. This can develop to the point that a person loves others more than he loves himself. He can find many explanations. For instance, if God forbid something bad happens to someone else, <clears throat> so he can, a person can find explanations why bad things might happen to himself, God forbid. But to find explanations why bad things happen to others, this is totally impossible and forbidden. Huh? To say that a person, uh, right, the, the Jahir Shmerl stubbed his toe, he got in an accident, ah, he deserved it. He, uh, ah, that's disgusting. Even if he really did deserve it, right? But uh, can't say that about a, a, another Jew, even about another person, unless he did made trouble for the Jews. <clears throat> for another person, there shouldn't be any suffering in the world. Except for the people who hate Jews, they should suffer. But except for that, why should there be suffering in the world? Right? Exactly the opposite. We're here to alleviate the suffering in the world. But if God forbid something happens bad to me, so I can say, listen, it's probably because, you know, I didn't learn enough Torah. It's try trying to, maybe I didn't do enough good deeds. Maybe I my bad thoughts, you know. Okay, I have to change my ways. I got to change my ways. You can't go up to somebody and says, you know, that they, they got in a car accident because you have to change your ways. You have to stop. You can't do that. If, listen, if you can do it in a loving way and the person really respects you mm -hmm. and you re person realizes you're doing it for your own good and not to say, eh, I told you so, right? But this requires a lot of real love and empathy to really, right? And you have to let the person calm down from this tragedy, whatever happens. But in general, you have to say, if you hear that a bad thing happens to a, a person that's, <clears throat> that's uh, a, a person you should say, well, the terrible, all the, troubles that happen to the world, they shouldn't happen. Okay, let's go. It's a tradition among the elders. I'll just tell you one small story. <clears throat> the story is a well-known story. There's all sorts of different versions of it, and I really never saw the original version, but it goes like this, that the mayor or the governor or whatever of, they arranged a meeting between the governor of New York or the mayor of New York with the Rebbe. And he came in to see the Lubavitcher Rebbe. It could be that this was Mir Koch. It could be. I'm not sure. <clears throat> in any case, so he went in and he said, is there anything that you would like? Can I do something for you? So the Rebbe said, the Chinese people, there's a big area in New York, this, you know, ch uh, Chinatown, Chinese. So they're very quiet people. They're not going to demand anything for themselves, but they have a lot of needs, a lot of things that they need. And they're not, uh, you know, they, they don't have a representative in the government. They don't, this was back then, I don't know, in the 50s, whatever, the 60s. I don't know when, when. And maybe you could send somebody just to see what they need. And take. So he came out, he said, I don't, I just don't understand. It could be maybe the Rebbe asked for things for himself also, but that's, that was a very main, that was the first thing he asked. Whatever. So he said, I mean, the, the Rebbe has connections with the Chinese people. He's going to get something back. You know, the Chinese are going to do him a favor or something, you know. He has no connection with the Chinese people. What the, how does he even know what they need? Okay, that how the Rebbe knows what they need, that's no question. Because the Rebbe feels the pain 
uh, and the difficulties of every human being in the world. Of course, the Jews first. The main thing is, <clears throat> but the idea is, is that you can't see a person suffer, and to have a sense of trying to alleviate the suffering of other people. This is a very big gift. Okay, that's that was the first utter. Here's the second. And the tradition <clears throat> among the elders of Chabad, Anash means Ansei Shlomeinu, that the Tanya, there's two different ways here. We'll say the Tanya, this is a collection of advice that was given by the first Rebbe, the altar Rebbe, first Rebbe, to the Hasidim when they came for private audiences between the years of the 10 years of 1780 and 1790. In the summer, and two years after, he began arranging this book, the Tanya, in the form that it is now. In other words, these are advice given to people who genuinely want to serve God and lead a full, happy, but genuine and truthful life. How to do it. And that's the advice which is given. A year later, there were already numerous copies, but in time, there were corruptions of the text. And there were people that even purposely, intentionally falsified. For that reason, the Rebbe had it printed. That's one version. Another version is like this. For 20 years, the Rebbe took writing this book, the Tanya, and he examined every word. By the word, by the year 1795, 1795, the, the, he was put into prison in 1797, the Alter Rebbe. So in 1795, the text was completed and he granted permission to copy it when they became copied, when the copies became very numerous and they became corrupted, in other words, there were people that intentionally put in wrong words, he had it printed. He originally did not want it to be printed. He thought it would be like, you know, letters that would be passed around among the Hasidim themselves. The Tzemach Tzev, the third writer of Chabad, he was the grandson, said on the first Rosh Hashanah, when he was born <clears throat> in 1789, the Alter Rebbe spoke the statement of the Talmud and he has administered an oath, right? This is 89. This is, <clears throat> uh, what is it, three years before it was printed. Anyway, the Alter Rebbe spoke and he said, uh, <clears throat> and this is the first three chapters of the Tanya. First three chapters of the Tanya that began, right? He had it printed in any case, that began in 1789, when it actually became... So different opinions about when the Alter Rebbe actually started it and formulated it and when it was when it was printed, everybody knows. <coughs> about how the Alter Rebbe... In any case, Baruch Hashem, thank God, we have the book, the Tanya, and it says that one of the Alter Rebbe's pupils said, how could you put such a big God in such a small book, the Tanya? Amazing book, advice on how to serve God genuinely and happily and truthfully and productively every moment of your lives <clears throat> and bring blessing into the world. That's the book, the Tanya. Hope to see everybody three o'clock today. Okay, three o'clock today, there probably will not be a class because there's a, I have this thing I have to go to. Actually, the thing is coming to me. They're making a big uh, bris in my house for good friends. So I, but I will record the class. I'll try to record the class before or at least afterwards. So you'll see it uh, uploaded. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, thank you very much for coming. God bless you all. Thank you.